Hello and welcome to this week's Park Life as City head to my hometown to take on Crawley. Coming up on today's show, we hear from the manager, Matt Taylor. We get another little bit of history from Will Barrett and I've let Jed loose on the opposition as he gives us the lowdown on Crawley Town. But first, let's take a look back to Tuesday night as City headed to Essex to take on Colchester United. Quality in this squad, quality that has had them contending for the playoffs in years gone by. But just the PC's not working well together right now. There's Taylor, Seymour. That's a good run by Key, and it's a cross for Wilmot. And there's the opening goal for Exeter. Lovely, slick move. Cut right through the heart of Colchester here. And that was a nice, easy finish for Wilmot. Can he's on his run? Instead, the cross comes right across the box. It's well blocked. Shot was from Wilmot, who's already got one goal. And now in it comes again from Archie Collins. But that's some nice skill there. And a chance to get the ball across. Well dealt with by Gherkin, but the shot comes back in from Seymour. Off the woodwork and then headed behind. Can they get a goal just before half time? It's Harriet with the delivery. Oh, Nubly so close. Quarters. Really vivacious attacking brand of football that they play and right on cue, a lovely bit of skill. And the shot comes in from Matt J, who's been everywhere with Edu. And it goes and the flick on. Oh, and did Gherkin get a touch? Matt J as ever on the move. Key. What's oh, a brilliant run from Key, ball in, and Seymour's met it! And he's doubled Exeter's leads, Ben Seymour. Told the press he intended to take his chance with Ryan Bowman out suspended for a few games. And in terms of taking chances, he's taken that one gloriously. Lovely glancing header, a no-nonsense defender, I think it's safe to say. Chilvers. Nice exchange, and the ball across is turned home by Aramide Ote. The half-time substitutes. Played shorts, and there is the full-time whistle. Another disappointing result for Colchester. Here is manager Matt Taylor now. We caught up with him in the week as City looked to continue their good run of results in West Sussex. I probably missed Tom in terms of my time at the club. He was too young when I was when I was coming through when I was playing, um, and then obviously when I departed, he, he had his time as a player and got his, his move rightly so. Um, and he's had a fantastic season. Um, might have changed his game in terms of leading the line a little bit more. Um, added a physical profile to it and, and winning a lot of headers and, and challenging. Um, and it's been really impressive. Um, and it'd be interesting to see how his career develops from from this point on because he's probably not been around, but he's he's tried to find a home um, since leaving Exeter um, and trying to find some consistency. And he certainly seems to have done that at Crawley. And he's, he's one of a number of players we've got to be wary of this weekend. We saw when, when Crawley came to the park earlier this season, we perhaps won in, in a fortunate manner. Um, but we've got a good record at Crawley, you know, three wins from our last five there. Yeah, well, that, that will have been, you know, that's the past. That's totally different games, even though we're game early on in the season. Um, we're, we're a different profile at the moment. There'll be a different profile. Um, but, but, but the characteristics will still be the same. When you go away from home, you've, you've got to be so tough and so resolute and, and withstand any, any pressure. And, and we, we've shown recently how that first goal is, is absolutely key. Um, getting ahead or staying level for a long period of time gives you gives you a chance to adjust what you need to adjust during a game. Um, and we've done that really well recently. Um, but hopefully a good game of football. Um, hopefully the bad weather is behind us. Hopefully the pitches will keep improving. And um, we're looking forward to seeing what Crawley's surface will be like this weekend. Um, and, and some good attacking players on show. Um, but those attacking players will only get more of an opportunity if our defence and, and the middle of the pitch is, is right and strong and solid. Um, like I say, something which has been a really pleasing factor in the last couple of weeks. The newest Grecian recruit is winger Robbie Wilmot, who signed on deadline day on loan from Newport County. Here he is. We spoke to him in the week about how his first few weeks at the club is going. Yeah, no, it was a weight off my shoulders, I think. Um, it's been a long time coming, obviously, to get a, um, a goal. It's been a while for myself. Um, but to get it so early on, 
um, after joining the club and that um, that really helps and, it, and it's um, obviously you get a lot of confidence off of it as well. I mean, how was your, your first few weeks, I think about a month now, how, how's that been for you? I know you said in a previous interview that, you know, you're a lot more confident and you think you've become a better person in the last month. Yeah, no, it's been, it's been, um, it's been a real productive month. Um, it's been frustrating because we've had a few games called off as well. Um, but yeah, to, to get the assist against Bradford and, and the goal against Colchester, it's really helped. Uh, but I may have been made to feel really welcome and the, the, the coaches have really helped with the, um, the videos as well, being able to show me how, um, how they want me to play and stuff. So it's given me a new lease of life. It's, it's freshened my season up, which is what I probably needed. So um, I've just got to carry on now and hopefully continue my form on. Obviously, you're a versatile player. We've seen you on the left where your assist came against Bradford. We've, we've seen you on the, on the right and, and the goal on Tuesday came from you being in the middle. I mean, do you have a preferred position that you like to be in or, or are you just happy to, to be anywhere, really? No, I'm happy just to be anywhere. I think you've got to be able to read the game. Um, and, um, yeah, I made a run inside on Tuesday night and, and luckily Josh Key found me with a great, uh, great cross. Um, but I think a good thing about the front three was that we could chop and change, you know, um, and you, you, we got the gaffer gives us a real freedom to go and play, um, which is important. We saw on Tuesday night as well, the pitch at Colchester, it was, you know, it was a bit messy on one side. Um, got a similar situation at home at the moment. What's it like playing on a pitch like that, that that's heavy? Because I mean, I think you It's not too bad. Well. I mean, I played at Newport for four years. So it's, not, <laughs> it's not too bad, to be honest. After a successful debut on Park Life last week, we've allowed exiled media assistant Jed Pemberthy loose once again on screen. Here is his lowdown on the opposition at Crawley Town. City returned to the South East for the second time this week, this time making the trip to Crawley. Built as a commuter and trade stop off by the Romans, Crawley retains its travelling status by being the nearest town to Gatwick Airport. Established in 1896, the football club spent most of their history in non-league, but it wasn't until 2010 where they really burst onto the scene. After beating Swindon, Torquay and Derby in the earlier rounds, they set up a famous meeting with Manchester United. Steve Evans' side managed to limit the Premier League giants to just a one-goal win, but the season would be remembered even more so for their promotion. A record-breaking 105 points in a 30-game unbeaten run saw Crawley reach the Football League for the first time in their history. Back-to-back -back promotion saw Crawley promoted just the season later, but their stay was short-lived, only lasting another three years. Now they're back in League Two, and this season hasn't been the best for Crawley Town. They're hovering about in mid-table in 14. John Jens is currently in charge of Crawley at the moment. City fans may remember the 61-year-old as the assistant manager to Paul Tisdale in the 2008-9 promotion winning season. Yems left City in 2009 and was offered the director of operations job at Bournemouth. Now though, he's embarking on a managerial career and hoping that he can take Crawley back up to League One. Opened in 1997, the Broadfield Stadium or People's Pension Stadium for sponsorship reasons has a capacity of just over 6,000. Sitting just off the M23, it's an ideal location for away supporters and with the nearest station just less than a mile away, it's quite easy to get to by train as well. The record attendance at the Broadfield Stadium is 5,880 and that came in an FA Cup third round fixture against Reading in 2013. This week's one to watch needs no introduction for Exeter City supporters. One of our own Tom Nichols will be featuring for Crawley as the main man up top after Max Waters' departure. Nichols has 11 goals and 8 assists in his first season in Sussex and has been leading the line alongside Waters, who has since departed for Cardiff City. Tom came through the ranks here at Exeter City and made himself a household name in 2015 when he scored against Liverpool in the FA Cup and after 38 goals and 112 appearances for the Grecians, left for Peterborough in a £350,000 move in 2016. Just a year later, he returned to the South West with Bristol Rovers, where he spent three years before moving on loan to Cheltenham. He was released in the summer and was snapped up by Crawley in what could be described as one of the bargains of the season. Although lacking in minutes this season, another one to look out for may be Mark Wright. The former The Only Way is Essex star joined Crawley at the start of the season as he's been trying to reinvigorate his professional career. He had a youth spells at Arsenal, West Ham and Tottenham Hotspur before moving into non-league whilst he wanted to pick up his off-pitch career. 
Mark Wright sort of has international pedigree as well. He did play for the England C team back in his non-league days, whilst he's also played three times in Soccer Aid, scoring, winning the man of the match and winning Soccer Aid for England in 2016. His 30-yard free kick has gone down as one of the best goals that England have ever scored in Soccer Aid. And, well, he's a fullback now and he's at Crawley, but if he does get a shot from 30 yards, I think we know where it might end up. In 2011, Wright starred in I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here, finishing runner-up. So it's fair to say that he's used to an environment where he's surrounded by creepy crawlies. When Exeter beat Crawley 2-1 in October, that was City's sixth win over Saturday's opponents in the 14th game. In that time, there have been 33 goals, averaging just over two a game. There's only been one 0 nil draw in that time, and that was in the inaugural fixture back in 1971. Exeter, then managed by Johnny Newman, needed a replay to beat Crawley at St James Park. So in the 14 games, Exeter City have won six times, there have been five draws, and there have been three Crawley Town. This is, of course, our second match against Crawley Town this season. Let's take a look back at our home game here early in the season as City recorded a 2-1 win thanks to Ryan Bowman's behind. Time for a history lesson now. Here is club historian Will Barrett with a lowdown on the history between the Red Devils and the Grecians. And yes, I fact-checked every single word. City travelled to Crawley this weekend looking to do the double over our league opponents for the first time since the 2005-2006 season. Back then, we picked up a 2-0 win at the Broadfield Stadium whilst goals from Jamie Mackey, Dan Seaborn, Craig Farrell and Dean Moxie helped pull Tisdale's team to a thumping 4-0 victory in the game at St James Park that to this day remains our biggest win against Crawley in a total of 22 league and cup matches. Looking back even further, our first ever match against this weekend's opponents was the 71-72 FA Cup tie where a goalless draw against the then part-timers was followed by a 2-0 win in the replay at St James Park. From then, it wouldn't be until November 1994 till our next encounter. And again, it was in the FA Cup first round where we met at the park and saw City progress thanks to Mike Cicera's goal in a 1-0 win. Crawley's first goals against City came a decade later in our first ever league match. But despite going 2-0 down, Marcus Martin's first goal for City saw us hit back to win 3-2 in the conference game. In all, City were going unbeaten in our first 13 games against our Sussex-based opponents, and in total, the record reads 12 wins to three in favour of the Grecians with seven draws. Since Matt Taylor took charge in 2018, it is two wins, two draws and one defeat, with one of those victories coming in our last visit to Crawley in November 2019, when Dean Moxie popped up once again to down the Red Devils. It's time now to take a look back at our last visit to the People's Pension Stadium. City recording a 1-0 win thanks to Dean Moxley's late goal.
Red Devils were in action on Tuesday evening as they took on Grimsby. Here is all the action from Blundell Park. In the week, we put some of the fans' questions to a man who Matt Taylor calls the second nicest man in football. Here is Josh Key answering some of your questions. I'm going to begin with, um, and again, another apology if I mispronounce this, but Licho Torres uh, says, greetings from uh, Cordoba in Argentina. And he says he knows it's not a question, but he just wanted uh, us to know that he's supporting the team uh, with oh. his career mode on FIFA 21. So I thought it's nice to give give him a shout out there uh, but yeah, Jordan Freeman you. oh bless uh, Jordan Freeman uh, follows up uh, with who is the worst at FIFA in the squad um, you know what it's not as big as it used to be in the squad um, everyone's on call, like Call of Duty together now but I'm not really sure uh, probably probably have to say Ryan Bowman brutal yeah that's just the yeah. Not his skill with that. No, he's. Yeah. I admit, it's probably because he he doesn't he doesn't I don't know what the word is sweat it sweat it as much as other people do. So I wouldn't take it as too much of a as a non non compliment. He'll cope. I'm sure he'll cope. It'll be fine. Yeah, he might go for me for that now. Yeah, great stuff. Um, James Gold on there uh, says, "Did you find your driving instructor funny, uh, or did he have rubbish jokes?" <laughs> no, he was a, a lovely guy, Ian, and um, yeah, I really enjoyed my lessons with him, and he was a very good teacher. Um, yeah, he had good jokes from what I can remember. Um, I don't remember falling asleep at the wheel, so that's a, that's a good thing, I guess. That's cool. He'll but be yes, happy. Dev I'll give him a little plug as well. 17, 17 plus, if you want to find a good instructor, go to Ian Gold. Strong. He'll be glad he asked the question now, won't he? That's why it's uh, nice yeah. for him. Um, Graham Kirk, Kirky there. Um, he asked, who was your favourite teacher at St. Peter's? Um, it's a tough one. I'll probably say, no offence to the others, but probably Mr. Baker. Um, soundest guy, one of the soundest teachers I've ever had. There's a few very good teachers at that school, but um, first one that comes to my mind is Mr. Baker, yeah. Get on. Good teachers, good driving instructors. You've done well here. Yeah, um, I've done all right. Chris Daniel, um, he asked, how do you feel your loan moves uh, in the lower league prepared you for first team football? That's a good football related question, that one. Yeah, very good question. I think, um, you know, especially I went to Tiverton, I was at Biddeford. I, I think what they did, they sort of, they pushed me into that sort of men in, men environment um, where the physicality is a lot higher and it's not just pretty football. It's, it's, it's a lot of sort of battling for the game. And um I think if you look at when I went to Tivy, I, I played as a fullback there, which wasn't my position at the time. And, you know, it, it prepared me for what I'm, I'm doing now. So 
I probably didn't think at that time that I was going to be playing as a fullback in the first team. But, um, you know, it's, it's one of those things where it's at the time you're a bit annoyed, but it's, it's, it's a blessing in disguise. So, um, yeah, that it, it prepares you in different ways because you might play in different positions. So, and that just made me enjoy football as well. So, yeah, that might that'd be my two probably um, answers for that. That's a great, great, great set of answers there. Of course, it leads on to Nick Hurst, um, who said, Who did you learn most from uh, at Tiverton Town? Who did you say it's from Nick Hurst? Nick Hurst, yeah. <laughs> yeah, probably, probably Nick Hurst himself, you know, most dynamic fullback I've ever played with. Uh, so no, he was he was a very very good player, Hursty, and I think he he could have um gone on to play a higher le- level of football. So um yeah, he's a good lad. But I mean, Dodge the manager, he taught me a lot of, of different things. So um, but now I'm going to give that one to Hursty himself. There, I, yeah. I, I know why I, I know why I asked that question. Ah, uh, it's great. It's it's nice to see people coming in fishing for a compliment, compliment. this week. Yeah, the way it is. Uh, someone else who not fishing for compliments, but really for advice. Adrian Williams, um, it's kind of asked what has been the hardest football decision you have had to make so far, and and he says this has been asked by an under 11s academy player. Hardest football decision. That's a good question. One I might need to think about. Um, I think. I think. I mean, generally in football you've got to make the decisions whether you're going to go all out and focus on your football or whether you you want to, you know, you look at your mates and you think, oh, I'd like to do the things that they're doing on the weekends or in the week, you know, they get to go on holidays when you don't and have time off and they get to do all the fun things. I think the hardest decision is is really committing to it and saying, you know, I, I want to be a footballer, so I'm going to commit, you know, my, my well-being and my life to it. Um, and either go all the way. I would don't sit on the fence. If you don't, if you're not sure, then either go for it or don't. Um, that would be my my answer for that one. As uh, as decisions go, it's a fairly fairly fundamental one, isn't it? I think that's that it is. some great advice there and a great answer. Um, Sarah's interested to know if you have any pre-game routines. Um, I mean, I'm not I'm not a superstitious person, but. I like to keep things similar. So like on game day, I don't eat vegetables um, because, you know, they <laughs> they make my stomach a bit gaseous. Um, I make sure I drink. I'm hydrated the night before. Um, I'll eat loads of carbohydrates the night before. Um, but before the game, there's nothing really. I just, yeah, that's that would be it really. Sometimes I wear shin pads out in the warm up. Sometimes I don't. Um, and I, to be fair, but just for, just as I go out onto the pitch to start the game, I always have to do one big jump and header. That's one thing that I do. So cool. that's all I can think of for that one. No, that's good. That's that's great. Um, and finally, uh, from the fans, um, and apologies in advance for this one, but ECFC Daily and Matt Cousins have kind of combined. Um, they ask, have you got the key? Uh, and have you got the secret to... <laughs> <laughs> I got the key. No, um... I like to think I have some sort of key. Um, yes, I like that chant as well, but I'm not sure other people are liking it. So um, you can come along and sing that when the fans are back if you want. Um, but yeah, I like to, I've got the key because I'm key, but hopefully I can uh, give the secrets. <laughs> Nicely done, mate. You, you, you worked your way through that one. Um, Josh, thank you so much for your time today. Um, I very much hope we will all be back at some point soon singing that song. Um, and supporting you and the lads but uh, cool. for myself and everyone uh, wish you all the best for the rest of the season thanks guys thanks for all the questions following your heart in spirit in soul you make every tackle score every goal you're part of it wherever you are in the world from the first minute until the last kick victories heartbreaks you're part of the fabric, the passion, devotion, supercharging emotion. For you, there is only one abiding loyalty, togetherness that is second to none. Follow every kick, every tackle, every goal. With access to live stream games and match day commentary, with coverage spanning the globe, behind the scene content, newsletters, and match highlights. There's no better way for you to get closer to your club. And the I follow sales supporting them. 
no better way to show your love. When you can't be there, be there with I Follow. Thank you so much for joining me on Park Life this week. That is all we've got time for. Remember, if you want to watch the game this weekend, pick up a match pass on iFollow for just £10. You can also follow all the live action throughout the afternoon on our social media channels, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, the website as well. We'll have all the report and reaction from Crawley after the game. Be sure to check that out. One last thing for me to say, and that is come on, City!